Magandang magandang umaga sa inyo lahat. Uh, good morning everyone. Welcome to Knowledge on the Go Live. Ito na naman, ito na naman inyong host, si Kuya Kim Matienza. Today is a good day. Kakatapos lamang ng bagyo. Wala na po sa ating uh, bansa si Bagyong Auring. Nag-dissipate na. And we are expecting good weather in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Pati ang amihan natin, yung Northeast Monsoon na nagpaparinig ng umaga natin. Ako asahan natin, lalamig na naman ang ating panahon. So how are you this morning? Are you able to exercise? Nakapag-breakfast na ba kayo? Of course, our kids are nasa schooling at home. Uh, Pagsagaan lamang natin because uh, malapit na yan. The vaccine is coming and maybe in a few months, we'll be able to see our friends again in person. I know it's difficult, kids, but uh, ay, nako, just be strong and uh, just pray all the time and uh, we will get through this. Matatapos din itong COVID na ito. But right now, mag-enjoy mo na tayo and let's play Knowledge on the Go! As with any other show, we always start with trivia. Sa likuran ko ngayon, uh, nandito yung mga koleksyon ni Kuya Kim ng iba't ibang mga fossils, iba't ibang mga space objects. And I will show you a few space objects that I've collected. Number one is unang-una, usong-uso kasi ang outer space ngayon. Because yung uh, Perseverance uh, rover already landed in the planet Mars last week. And this is a first in humanity. So we'll talk about space objects. This is a meteorite. A meteorite. It's called the Sikot Alin meteorite. Ito yung nahulog galing sa outer space. Ito yung nahanap sa uh, Vladivostok in Russia. Normally, they name a meteorite from where it is found. So it was found in Sikot Alin mountains. So therefore, it's called the Sikot Alin meteorite. Now, one thing about meteorites, pagka binuhat natin ito, napakabigat nito, it is so dense. Alam niyo bakit dense? The cells are so close together because there's no oxygen in between the cells. Unlike mga bato na nakikita natin dito sa planet Earth, may mga oxygen cells in between the, the cell, the rock cells, the iron cells, etc. Ito wala. Why? Because there's no oxygen in outer space where it's found. So a meteorite is about four times heavier than a terrestrial stone. So this is a Tikot Alin meteorite from Russia. Meteorites, ganito yan. When it's flying in outer space, ang tawag sa kanya ay meteors, okay? When it hits the atmosphere, boom, magliliyab yan. It's called a bolide or a ball of light. At pagkamanding na ito sa lupa at pinulot na, ang tawag kanya ay meteor. Okay. So this is a meteorite. From Latin word meaning lofty or something that is found up there. Galing sa mataas na lugar. So that's our trivia for today. The meteorite. The Sikot Alin meteorite of Kuya Kim. Again, before we start today, batiin muna natin ang ating mga nasa Kumu. Ang nasa Kumu ngayon ay batiin natin si uh, Mapi. Mapi, suki ka na namin palagi. Uh. Uh, you've always been watching us at si Pring Mastog sent Tikoy. Si Bijun sent Halo Halo. Bernadette, hello. Good morning. Bob Pink Spoggy sent Tikoy and many, many others. Arsa Asrael Gonzalez, cool. Uh, signal mo best, malapit na. Nabasawin mo. Lea Tut, hello Asrael. March Fritz, hello. Marjib Padillo, pa-shout out. Olinada Dilapag, Sobi Lodi. Alexa, Alexa Ganda, hello po Kuya Kim and many, many others. Yun, so kung ready na tayo, ganang araw sa inyo lahat sa mga nasa Facebook naman. Abatiin din natin kayo mamaya. Okay? Uh, so, it's not a good day to learn. Mag-start na tayo. Uh, you can send us a gift, gifts in the Kumu and all the gifts that we shall be receiving will go to Knowledge Kids for Poor Children. Magpupunta po sa charity. Hindi po si Kuya Kim, wala pong kikitain si Kuya Kim dito, or Knowledge Channel. This will go to Knowledge Kids for Children. Yan uh, I-share nyo rin ang ating episode ngayon sa inyong mga students, classmates, kaibigan, kapamilya, at kamag-anak. Mas maraming natututo, mas masaya. Sabi nga, the more, the merrier. Ang lessons natin ngayon ay from grade 6 and grade 7. Game na ba kayo? Kung game na kayo, let's play! Let's play na! Okay, knowledge on the go! Live! Let's start with our first question. Ang una nating tanong ay mula sa subject na Filipino. Ang tanong, Sino ang hindi kabilang sa dwarfs sa kwentong Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? A. Doc B. Happy C. Sad D. Sneezy 20 seconds starts now. 
Sino hindi kabilang sa dwarfs sa kwentong Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Just Doc, Happy, Sad, Sneezy. Okay. 20 seconds. 15. 10 more seconds to go. Emelita Almano. Good morning. Zyuda Nini. Good morning. Kumo file. Okay. Time's up. Ang correct answer ay... Correct answer is... Ang tamang sagot ay letter C. Sad. Hindi siya kabilang sa kwentong Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Ang Seven Dwarfs lang na kasama ni Snow White ay sina Bashful, Doc, Dopey, Grumpy, Happy, Sleepy, at Sneezy. But originally, ang mga pangalan na Dwarfs ay Jumpy, Lazy, Puffy, Burfy, Burpy, Stuffy, Daffy, and Wheezy. Sino ang paborito niyo sa kanila? Sino ang pinaka-paborito niyo? I remember seeing the Seven Dwarfs the, the first time I went to Walt Disney to Disneyland in Anaheim, California. Meron silang ano eh, every afternoon nagpaparada yan eh. Parada. And then in the, in that parade, I saw the Seven Dwarfs. I was so thrilled. But I was already 17 years old. Eh, first time ako nakabiyahe. Tanda ako na. But uh, I will never forget. Okay, the next question is from science. It is the type of relationship between two living organisms in which one organism benefits from the other without harming it. A. Competition. B. Mutualism. C. Commensalism. D. Parasitism. 20 seconds starts now. It's a type of relationship between two living organisms in which one organism benefits from the other without harming it. Okay. Competition, mutualism, commensalism, parasitism. We have seven more seconds to go before the time is up. Two, one. Time's up. But the right answer is letter C. Commensalism. Ang commensalism ay isang klase ng symbiotic relationship kung saan ang isang species ay nagbe-benefit habang ang isa man ay neither harmed nor helped. Kumbaga, hindi siya nasisira pero nakakatulong siya doon sa isa. So, commensalism ang tawag. Ang halimbawa ng commensalism ay ang mga orchids growing on three branches. small size flower lang ang orchids kaya hindi ito harmful sa branch kung saan ito tumutubo. Nandun lang siya, nakadapo, getting moisture from the air, but it's not harming the sponsor tree. Unlike, there's, there are other relationships kasi like parasitism wherein pagdapo ng isang halaman ay nako namamatay yung dinadapo niya. So, ganun. Commensalism is the right answer. So, sino ba nakakuha ng mga right answers? Yun. Si Angel Gaming User 0666. Baga, mabaga lamang ang kumu signal natin kaya medyo may delay ako dito. But I see all of you and I see that you're giving gifts. And our target for today is uh, I hope that we have at least a thousand live followers or live viewers. Right now, we have 577 already and we have 1,275 diamonds already. Thank you very much. already. Thank you very much. 577, sana dumami pa tayo. Ang next question naman natin ay mula sa subject na Aralin Palipunan. Anong makasaysayang pangyayari ang naganap noong ika-7 ng Disyembre taong 1941? Anong makasaysayang pangyayari ang naganap noong ika-7 ng Disyembre 1941? A. Ang pagbabalik ni MacArthur. B. Ang pagkakatatag ng KKK. C ang pagkahuli ni Rizal. D, ang pabomba o pabomba ng mga hangnes sa Pearl Harbor. 20 seconds starts now. Okay? 20 seconds starts now. We don't remember World War II because we weren't born then. My parents were already 10 or 11 years old when World War II was happening so my dad has very clear memory of what happened. But I remember that EDSAS. EDSA 1, EDSA 2, and EDSA 3. Time's up! Ang tamang sagot ay letter D, ang pagbomba ng mga hapon ng Pearl Harbor. Nangyari ito noong December 7, 1941. Makasaysayang taon ito dahil ito rin ang naging kudyat ng ikalawang digmaang pandaigdig or World War II sa Pacific. Ang Pilipinas doon ay nasa ilalim ng Estados Unidos kaya nasangkot rin tayo sa digmaan. Pagkatapos buwambahin ng Pearl Harbor, nilusog naman ng mga eroplanong pandigma ang Clark Airfield sa Pampanga at ang Nichols Airfield Air Base, binomba rin ang Davao, Baguio, Tarlac at Tugaygaraw. Itong isa sa mga di malilimutang pangyayari sa ating world history. Nakuha niyo ba ang tamang sagot? So, sana maraming nakakuha. 
medyo na tumirik itong scene zone ko dito sa Kumu. Mabagal lang signal natin. And I'm not able to read your message. I'm sorry. This happens all the time. I will reload. But anyway, I know that you're there. And I thank you very much for uh, being here with me. Dito sa... Let me just uh, reset my internet, okay? So I can read you. Kasi sayang naman eh. I'd like to see all of you. There you go. Okay, anyway, let's go on. From the next uh, subject natin, ang subject natin ay English. True or false? Short stories, letters, articles, and other texts that we read from beginning to end are examples of non-linear text. 20 seconds to answer. It starts now. True or false? Short stories, letters, articles, other texts that we read from beginning to end are examples of non-linear text. With 10 more seconds to answer. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up. The answer is false. Texts that are read from beginning to end are called linear texts. Ang linear text ay kailangan basahin ang magkakasunod. While in non-linear texts, the readers do not have to go through the text in a sequential manner in order to make sense of it. Naintindihan niyo ba ang pagkakaiba ng linear at non-linear linear texts? Pakarlito clap naman tayo dyan. Karlito clap. Thank you very much for all of those who are on Scene Zone in Kumu. Let me restart it so we can see who are watching right now. But thank you very much for joining us, guys. Huh? Okay? Uh -huh. Just give me a second. One second. We shall reset our Kumu. But, uh, I really want to see all of you. And I want to read all your messages. Eh? Okay. Season. Ah. Anyway, whatever. I know that you're there. And give me a second, lang, guys. Huh? Okay. Just the internet is so slow. And it's funny, sa kumo lang mahina yung internet. Sa computer ko malakas yung internet. Okay! Never mind. Okay! Facebook, uh, we like to say hello to our Facebook viewers. Johan Almendral, Dennis Sumaling, Yasmini Colliado, Jajuri Lin, Valido, Charis Lising Rivera, Dennis Malinog, Paolo Luis Sumalino, Grisa May Pagios, Shem Mejorada, Mameria, Agno, Andrea May Bagniaga, Jennifer Tumanan. Just send me na lang guys, the uh, staff, send me the, the, those who comment on Kumu as well. Na. Hindi ako makakonect dito eh. So thank you very much. Okay, get your scratch papers that it's time to do some math for question number five. The question is, if M equals one and P equals five, what is P squared plus M? A, six. B, seven. C, 11. D, 26. 20 seconds to solve starts now. Go. If M is equal to one and P is equal to five, what is P squared plus M? 6, 7, 11, 26. You have uh, 15 more seconds to answer. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up! The correct answer is letter D, 26. Para ma-evaluate natin ang P squared plus M, is a substitute o i-replace natin ang P in the expression with 5 and M with 1. Kapag na-substitute na natin, that's the time that we simplify or apply what we know about the order of operations. So from P squared plus M, ito na ay magiging 5 squared plus 1. 5 squared is the same as 5 times 5. So 5 times 5 is 25. Plus 1 is 26. Kaya tamang sagot ay letter D, 26. Tama ba nakuha niyo sagot? Comment lang tayo pag tama nakuha natin sagot. Thank you very much for supporting us on Kumu. Um, those, every gem or every diamond that we gather goes to charity. So, maraming maraming salamat. Keep on sending those gifts kasi makakakulong sa mga may hirap na studyanting tinutulungan ng Knowledge Channel. Okay? We now move on to question number six. Susunod na tanong naman tayo mula sa science. Which of the following does not show predation? Predation. A. Penguins catching fish under the ice. B. 
tiger stalking and killing a deer in the forest. C. Oxpeckers eating the parasites of a rhinoceros. D. Sparrows catching insects to feed their young. 20 seconds starts now. Ano rito ang hindi predation? Penguins catching fish under the ice. Tiger stalking, killing a deer in the forest. Oxpeckers eating parasites of a rhinoceros. Sparrows catching insects to feed their young. Predation. You have 10 more seconds to go before the time is up. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ang, ta ang tamang sagot ay letter C. Oxpeckers eating the parasites of a rhinoceros. Ang letters A, B, at D ay nagpapakita ng ecological relationship na predation. Predation is a relationship in which members of one species, the predator, consume the members of another species, the prey. Yung predator lang ang nakikinabang dito dahil kinakain nila ang prey. Habang ang letter C naman ay example ng mutualism. Mutualism is a relationship between organisms from two different species in which both the organisms benefit from the relationship. Ibig sabihin, pareho nakikinabang ang dalawang hayop sa isa't isa. Sa relationship ng oxpecker sa rhino, yung oxpecker ay isang uri ng ibon na namumuhay sa tulong ng rhino na kinakain nila ang mga bugs at parasites na nakadikit sa katawan ng rhino. Nakikinabang ang oxpecker dahil lagi siyang may pagkain. Nakikinabang naman ang rhino dahil natatanggal ang bugs at peste sa kanyang katawan. Imagine ang katikatin nun, no? Dagdag kalaman. Alam niyo ba na kapag may danger, ng predators sa paligid, lumilipad ng mataas ang oxpecker at gumagawa ng malaks na ingay para maalerto ang mga hayop sa paligid nito. Sa nagbabantang panganim, ang galing ng nature, hindi ba? So talagang makikita ng mga rhino at ng mga ibang hayop pa na merong predators sa paligid pag lumipad ng mataas ang mga oxpecker. Yan. So mutualism, okay? Right now, sa ating kumu, we have 940 viewers and 3,100 gems. Ako, thank you very much for all the gems. This shall go to poor students. And malapit na tayo sa target natin ng 1,000 viewers. 940 viewers. 60 viewers to go. And we shall have 1,000. Last week, we had 1,200 total. Okay? Wala naman sa Pilipino. Ano ang tamang pang-uri na kukumpleto sa kilusan na tinatag noong 1892? Blank, katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan. A. Kabutibutihan. Kagalang-galangan, kagalang-galang. B, kamanghamanghang, kakaibang. C, kataas-taasang, kagalang-galang. Kagalang-galangan. <laughs> Nabubulo ko. Sorry. D, kagila-gilalas at kakaibang. 20 seconds to answer starts now. Ano ang tamang pang-uri na kukumpleto sa kilusan na tinatag noong 1892? Blank, katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan. Nabuti-butihang kagalang-galangan, kamanghamanghang kakaibang, kataas-taasang kagalang-galangan, kagigilagilalas at kakaibang. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time's up! Ang tamang sagot ay letter C. Kataas-taasang, kagalang-galangan ang pang-uri ng kukumpleto sa kilusang tinatag noong 1892. Ito ang katipunan o KKK. Alam niyo ba na ang kataas-taasang kagalang-galangang katipunan ng mga anak ng bayan o KKK ay tinatag ni Andres Munifacio na tinaguri ang ama ng himagsikang Pilipino. Sino dito ang nakakakilala kay Andres Munifacio? Raise your hands. May trivia ako kay Andres Munifacio. Although we see him all the time na meron siyang hawak na bulok o bolo, this is a famous painting by Botong Francisco. Actually, Andres Munifacio, ah, si Andres Munifacio is an expert sa pistola o sa baril. He's a sharpshooter. Yung bolo, artistic tradition lang yun. Pero magaling siya maril. Magaling siya maril. Okay? Sino dito nakakuha ka, nakakilala kay Andres Munifacio? Raise your hands and drop us some card dito. Hello. Drop us some card dito. Hello. Okay? We now move on to the next question. The next question is from Mathematics. So, teka muna. Meron tayong signal. Let me check my kumo now. Ito'y papasok na. Mm -hmm. There you go. Finally. Connecting na. 
Okay, I'd like to say hello to Marie Carganad. Hello, Smooth Chicken. Thank you for the halo halo. Miss Cardamiel, thank you very much. Thank you for joining. Alarisa, Alarisa Perez. Birdie Jazzy. Jean, thank you very much. Much Mixa, user 66056656. And we now have 1,077 live viewers dito sa ating knowledge on the go. And we have 3,410 gems. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat. Thank you very much, guys. Okay. Nandito na tayo sa next question natin. Question number eight. Translate a number less than two into an algebraic expression. A, x minus two. B, two minus x. C, x less than two. D, two less than x. 20 seconds starts now. Translate a number less than 2 into an algebraic expression. A number less than 2. x minus 2, 2 minus x, x less than 2, 2 less than x. We have 5 more seconds to answer. We now have 1,101 viewers here on Kumu. Time's up. The correct answer is letter D, 2 minus x. The word less than indicates subtraction. Kapag nagtatranslate tayo to algebraic expression that involves the word less than, ang number or term na nabanggit pagkatapos ng phrase na less than ang mauuna. Kaya we have 2 minus x, hindi pwedeng x minus 2. Dahil wala namang commutative property ang subtraction. Nakaka-8 over 8 na ba kayo? Sa Facebook at sa Kumu? Sino rito mga nakaka-8 over 8 na? Send us some gems. These gems will go to poor children. Okay, we now have 1,113 on scene zone dito po sa Kumu. And we'd like to say hello to Asrael Gonzalez. Matdali after this, malapit na. John Amak, 2003, tama ka, yes. Mapi, thank you very much for all the support. Okay, we now move on to question number nine mula naman sa subject na English. Black is a shortened version of a text that highlights its key points. A, excerpt. B, prologue. C. Summary D. Synopsis 20 seconds starts now Thank you for the Tikoy Chiri 2290 MJ Valiosa C. Honey 2887 C. Gene Rubs C. Ano kaya ang sagot? We now have 10 more seconds to go before time stop 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 Ang tamang sagot ay Letter C Summary. Making a summary helps us determine main ideas and gathers important information that supports them. Sa summary, highlight natin ang key points ng isang text. Kaya pag binasa mong summary ng isang libro, malalaman mo na kung tungkol saan ito kahit hindi mo mabasa ang buong libro page by page. Okay. Sino nakakuha ng tamang answer? O, si Carlos, si Iram, si Mapi. Alvi Pag, Tiffany, tama ka. Ayan, ang daming tama. Thank you. Okay, let's move on to question number 10. Mula naman to sa subject, Araling Panlipo. Ito ang sabi nito ang pagpapalakad sa mga bihag ng sundalong, na sundalong Filipino at Amerikano mula bataan at tungong kapastarlak. Ang clue natin, the first letter, the first word is D, and the, the first letter of the second word is M, D, M. Ito yung napakahabang paglalakad ng mga Pilipino na bihag ng mga hapon. 20 seconds to answer. 20 seconds starts now. Uy, ang daming mga tamang sagot. Nakikita ko. Maraming sagot si Manuel, si Esmil, si Mapi, si Tiffany, si Annalisa, Gary Jones, Danay Monay. Tama yata lahat dito. I think all words, we shall greet you later. We have 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Thumbs up. Tama sagot, tama kayong lahat is DM or Death March. Ang Death March o ang marcha ng kamatayan ay parusa ng mga na, naisukong mga sundalong Filipino at Amerikano. Sa apilitan silang pinalakad mula bataan patungong kapas tarlak. Pinamarcha ang mga bilanggo ng 100 kilometers ng ilang araw ng walang pagkain o tubig habang sila matanggap ng pangaabuso sa kamag ng mga sundalong hapon. Lampas di umano sa 10,000 Filipinos at 1,200 Americans ang nasawi sa gutom, sakit at pahirap. Nakapaapa ang marami dito ha. 
ang Death March ay ang isa sa pinakakarumal-dumal na halimbawa ng pagbamalupit noong World War II na ginawa ng mga Hapon. Kaya yung mga lolo't lolo natin, naku, galit sa Hapon yan. Now we've all forgotten whatever happened. But our lolos and lolas will never forget. Galit na galit sila sa mga Japanese. Okay, we now have 1,191 on Scene Zone and 3,915 Japanese. Thank you very much for all your support. Maraming maraming salamat. We'd like to greet our Facebook Facebook viewers also. Midalena Buel, Carmina Laca, Laika, Ana Maralit, Deiso Somalinog from Apipid, Boledo, Silonu City, Tuti Fu, Justin Espinida from Malolos, Bulacan. Next question. We have two more questions. Question number 11. Second to the last question. Ito naman ay sa general knowledge or current events. Ang tanong, ito ang buwan sa kalendaryo na may kakaroon ng karagdagang araw na sa tinatawag na leap year. A. March B. November C. February D. August Timer starts now. Ira, Annalisa, Honey, Melanie, JP Makmak, Jayan, Supporter, Kasuya, Esmili, Carlos, thank you very much for joining us. All right, we now have 1,221 live viewers. We have two more seconds to go. Time's up. The correct answer is, most of you got it, February. Alam niyo ba na nearly every four years nag a ng extra days sa ating calendar at pumapatak yan tuwing February 29. Ito rin ay kilala sa tawag na leap year. Ang additional 24 hours na ito sa ating calendar ay nagbibigay ng sapat na oras para manatiling in line ang Earth's movement around the Sun. Ibig sabihin, ang actual time para umikot o mag-orbit ang Earth sa kanyang star ay mahigit kung walang 3,600 365.2421 days. Ang susunod na leap year ay sa February 29, 2024. May kilala ba kayong may birthday ng leap year? Sa amin may sinasabi na ano daw, huwag ka rin magpapakasal pagka leap year. Kasi parang pikot daw yun. <laughs> Kasabi ng mga matatanda yun. But I don't believe in that. So sino nakakuha ng tamang sagot? Most of you got the right answer actually. I'd like to say hello to Pia De La Rais, Miss Dark Angel, Mappy, Chiri, Annalisa, Supporter KB23, and Guillena Asael Gonzalez. We have 1,242 live viewers on Scene Zone now. 1,245. We've reached our goal and much more. And we thank you for that. At ang dami ng gems naman natin ay 4,945 gems already. Thank you very much. We now move on to our last question. Ang last question natin for this episode tukol din sa current events. Ang tanong, Ito'y tinatawag din ang 1986 Philippine Revolution. Pinanganak na tayo nun. Pinanganak na si Kuya Kim nun. I was already 18 years old when this happened. A. La Solidaridad. B. People Power Revolution. C. Katipunan. D. Spanish-American War. 20 seconds starts now. Oy! Carlos Chiri. Bad, Tony, Nanay Monay Lahat kayo, puro tama ang sagot niyo Kasi sabihin ko anong letter Pero alam niyo na kung ano yun <laughs> This is very current Actually, giveaway question doon Napakadaling sabutin Time's up! Correct answer is You're correct People Power Revolution Or the EDSA Revolution Tomorrow, February 25, 2021 Marks the 35th anniversary of the People Power Revolution Noong February 1986 Alam niyo ba? Minum minum Pilipino Nagsama-sama Kasama si Kuya Kim may Mahigit apat na araw kami. Wala pong liguan, walang uwian. Nandun ako sa EDSA ng apat na araw. Papayapang nagprotesta bilang panawagan na matigil na ang dictatorial regime ng dating Pangulong Ferdinand Marcos. Sino sa mga viewers natin ang buhay na ng 1986? I was there and I'm proud to say that I was really part of EDSA Revolution. And it's an unforgettable experience because we were willing to give up our lives for democracy to be given back to our country. And let not anyone change history. Binabago ang kasaysayan at ang mga kontrabida ay ginagawang bida at ang mga bida ay ginagawang kontrabida. But let's not get political in the knowledge on the go. This is not a political segment. But uh, thank you guys for everything. Okay, nag-enjoy ba kayo? Sino dito nakaipo ng pinakamaraming correct answers? Very good. Ipagpatuloy nyo lang yan at don't forget to use and share that knowledge. Okay, and before we go, uh, I'd like to advertise my blog, Kuya Kim Atienza blog. I've been vlogging for the past four months already, 
and I now have about uh, almost 180,000 subscribers already. And uh, every Saturday at 6 p.m., I upload a new vlog. But please follow and subscribe. Daming knowledge, daming kaalaman sa mga mahilig ng bisikleta, mahilig ng motorsiklo. Marami rin ako nilalagay doon. But it's a general knowledge vlog. It's not only about motorcycling or bicycling. It's about everything under the sun. And if you have any suggestions, watch the vlog and tell Kuya Kim what you want to see on my vlog. Kuya Kim at yan sa vlog on YouTube. Type nyo lang, Kuya Kim. Nalabas na yung vlog na yan. We have about, uh, I'm on the road to 200,000 subscribers and thank you very much for that. So, maraming maraming salamat. Thank you very much for joining us sa Knowledge on the Go Live. See you again next week in another episode live. Muli ang, ito po ang inyong Kuya Kim na nagsasabing mag-aral ng maigi upang buhay ay buhi, bumuti. At uh, wag muna kayong alis dahil ilang sandali lamang makakasama niyo naman si Robby Domingo sa isang exciting at fun math na episode. So, don't go away. Robbie is now coming in. Maraming maraming salamat at lagi kong sinasabi, ang buhay ay weather-wed lang. Thanks for joining us, guys.